This tutorial is about survival function and hazard function. In this tutorial, we will delve into survival probability or survival function and hazard probability or we can call hazard rate or hazard function. Then we will look at types of hazard curves. After this, you will find out the differences between survival probability and hazard probability as well as their relationship. In the last section, you will delve into the cumulative hazard. So, what is survival probability? The survival probability or hazard function denoted by ST is a probability that a person survives longer than some specified time. The survival probability ST can be Describe as this equation, in which P stands for probability, capital T is the random variable for a person's survival time, and small letter T is any specific value of interest for the random variable capital T. For example, if you want to evaluate whether a person survived longer than five years after undergoing a treatment, small t equals 5. And then we asked whether capital T exceeds 5. This is the function to calculate survival probability at a given time. In this equation, STJ is the probability of being alive at time TJ. STJ minus 1 is a probability of being alive at time tj minus 1. nj is the number of patients alive just before tj, and dj is the number of events at time tj. At time t0 equals 0, the survival probability s0 equals 1. The value of st is constant between times of events. Therefore, the estimated probability is a step function that changes value only at the time of each event. We can easily see that in the kaplan meier curve. Uh, this is the kaplan meier curve that describes survival probability versus survival time. We can see the survival probability is the step function and the probability is constant between events. We will look further into this curve and learn how to calculate survival probability through an example in the kaplan meier estimate. Survival probability focuses on not failing or not occurring, while hazard probability denoted by H t or lambda t is defined as the rate of failure or event occurs at a given time, given that the failure has not occurred prior to time t. In other words, the hazard probability gives the instantaneous potential of having an event at a time, given that the individual has survived up to that time. To get an idea of what instantaneous potential means, we consider the concept of velocity. For example, if you are driving in your car and you see that the speedometer is showing 60 km per hour, what does this really mean? It means that if you continue to drive at this speed in the next hour, you would cover 60 km. This reading gives the potential at the moment you have looked at your speedometer for how many kilometers you will travel in the next hour. However, because you may slow down or speed up or even stop during the next hour, the reading of 60 km per hour does not tell you the number of kilometers you really will cover in the next hour. The speedometer tells you only how fast you are going at a given moment. That is, the instrument gives instantaneous potential or velocity. This is a survival function in which 
capital T is the random variable for a person's survival time. Small letter t is any specific value of interest for the random variable capital T. Delta t denotes small interval of time. The probability in the numerator of hazard probability is conditional probability. It is the probability that a person's survival time, capital T, will lie in the time interval between t and t plus delta t. Given that, the survival time is greater or equal to t. The hazard function is sometimes called a conditional failure rate. It is probability per unit of time. It is the rate but not the probability. The rate ranges from 0 to positive infinity. Hazard function is instantaneous potential per unit of time and limb or limit give instantaneous potential. In contrast to survival curve, hazard curves do not start at 1 and go down to 0. It can start anywhere and go up and down in any direction over time. Hazard rate is always greater or equal to 0 and has no upper bound. Here are some graphs showing different types of hazard curves. The first graph shows a constant hazard for a study of healthy persons. For a person who continues to be healthy throughout the study period, his or her hazard rate for being yield at any time remains constant throughout the following up period. The second graph shows a hazard function that is increasing over time. An example of this kind of graph is called an increasing weevil model. Such a graph might be expected for leukemia patients not responding to treatment where the event of interest is death. As survival time increases for such a patient, and as the prognosis accordingly worsens, the patient potential for dying of the disease also increases. In the third graph, the hazard function is decreasing over time. An example of this graph type is called a decreasing weevil. A graph like this might be expected when a person recovering from a surgery where the event of interest is death. The hazard probability decreases because the potential for dying after surgery usually decreases as the time after surgery increases. The fourth graph shows a hazard function that is first increasing and then decreasing. An example of this graph type is a log normal survival model. We might expect shock a graph for tuberculosis patients because their potential for dying increases early in the disease and decreases later. So, we have learned what are survival probability and hazard probability and their properties. We know they have differences and here are the main differences between them. The survival function focuses on not failing or not occurring, while the hazard function focuses on occurring. Regarding data analysis, the survival function is more naturally appealing for the analysis of survival data because it directly describes the survival experience of a study cohort. However, the hazard function is interested in a measure of instantaneous potential for occurrence of an event. It may also be used to identify specific modal form, such as an exponential, a weebow, or a log normal curve that fits one's data. Besides, the hazard function is a math model for survival analysis. Survival probability ranges from 0 to 1, while hazard rate varies from 0 to positive infinity. Although there are differences between the survival function and hazard function, there is a clearly defined relationship between these two functions. This is the equation of the relationship. The equation shows 
has that function equals minus derivative to time multiplied by the natural logarithm of the survival function. Probably we need a separate tutorial to explore why we have this equation later. The point here is that if either survival probability or hazard probability is known, the other is automatically determined. Unlike survival probability, there is no simple way to estimate hazard rate. Instead, a quantity called the commutative hazard denoted by capital HT is commonly used. It is defined as the integral of the hazard or the area under hazard function between times 0 to t. Mathematically, the cumulative hazard function equals minus natural logarithm of the survival function. This is a community hazard curve. The cumulative hazard increases as the time increases. The community hazard is used to characterize the accumulated risk of experiencing the event of interest up to time t. And this function is an intermediary measure to estimate hazard rate. Up to now, you have understood what is survival analysis, sensor data, and two important terms, survival function and hazard rate. In the next section, you will learn the Kaplan-Meier estimate, a method we can use to visualize the survival probability or survival function. I see you in the next tutorial. Thank you.